We are back at halftime with the Rams trailing at 17 to nothing. The Boucher Agency's made some major changes in the last year. And now they're even better equipped to handle your home and auto insurance needs. The Boucher's are now independent agents. In addition to Nationwide, the Boucher's are now working with all the leading companies in the industry to find more ways for you to save on your home and auto insurance. Call your hometown independent agents, John and Nick Boucher, at 724-224-4300 and choose the coverage that's right for your family. They have evening and Saturday hours for your convenience. Remember, in the AK Valley, you're in good hands with the Boucher Agency on your side. Halftime stats brought to you by Mason Elite Hoops, training K through 12. Visit the Mason Elite Facebook page for more info. And now I give you Kathy Choma's husband, who I saw at halftime. I did, too, and uh, that's why I'm late getting back, okay, but Mike, uh, the, first, the statistics are crazy, too. Hines, seven first times, Hampton only four. Rushing about even, Hampton 119, Hines 109. Passing even, 15 for Hampton, 12 for Highlands. Total 121 for Hines, 134 for Hampton. Third down conversion, Hampton three of six. Here's a big one, Mike Hines. Very good all year, 0 for five tonight. Oh. Penalty, three for 25 for Highlands, two for 20 for Hampton. Turnovers, the two big turnovers. And I see you scratch that one up, Mike. Uh, as, I'm as so, well so flustered. I, it's, you know, I, know. I apologize for uh, my outburst. But. No turnovers for Hampton. Time of possession, about even. Hampton 114, Highlands 1246. That's, Highlands finds itself in a big hole. Here. We have our first rolls tonight. That's usually you yelling at the officials during basketball season. <laughs> um, Highlands had been 63% converting third downs this year and allowed only 14%, so you see the difference there. Uh, Mason Elite Hoops training K through 12 at Legends Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Mills Mall. Now I'm going to make everybody feel better. I got it confirmed from field level at halftime. Luke Bombolski was indeed handing the ball to the official. There you go, Mike. He was so down, he was handing the ball to the official. That is just crazy. And that's, um, and it's just, I'm sorry, but it's inexcusable. Yep. Now I know everybody makes mistakes, and that's why I'm glad, that's why I don't, but, uh, even, uh, but seriously, that's just, and, and even Hampton's bench at the time of it, the, the quote from the Hampton bench was, man, did we steal one there. Exactly. So, so. Like a halftime score, Plum 12, Mars nothing. And that might not have even been the worst one. The worst one was on the ensuing kickoff when Ashton Hadichek had the ball stripped away from him by a Hampton player, which absolutely happened. Um, Hampton was going to be, Highlands was going to be charged with a holding penalty had they retained the ball. They marched off the penalty, and both offenses were on the field. I mean, you talk about confusion, and it's like I think they were still flustered from the play before. I'll be honest with you. You know how that can happen to, to, to the kids on a play. I, I really think that they, they were still flustered. And by the way, it was Joey Meyer. I was right. I wasn't sure. Thanks to George Guido for that. Joey Meyer picked it up and ran 44 yards for a touchdown, so I want to give him proper credit because he did the right thing. You never stop yeah, until yeah. you hear a whistle, and that's just good, good heads-up play on his part. So now the Rams will kick off to start the second half, and let's go for an onside kick. What do you say? Might as well, Mike. We're in a desperate situation here, trailing 17 to nothing at halftime. And again, like I said, it's uh, well. The new sponsor coming up tonight, by the way. We want to. We we would like to. We're, we're all excited yeah, about hang that. Hang on to the end of the third quarter. For trivia time, and yep. uh, we'll have that. So that'll be fun. Jake Premick on the near side of the field. Joey Meyer on the far side. Bombalski has it teed up at the 40. Let's hope it doesn't get that far. Yes, odd for Hines, first kick of the night at halftime. And he kicks a pooch to the near side. And it's picked up by Premick at the 25-yard line. Spins out of there, up over the 30, and brought down at the 33-yard line by Ethan Roberts. I saw Robert Rakowski outside. I haven't seen Rutt in a while. He says he sees me all the time and honks at me while I'm walking. So, <laughs> former He's Highlands a lower ball resident. He is a lower yep. ball resident. His buddy uh, Nick Boucher, who we talked about earlier, also lives in the LB. So. They're moving over, Mike. Yeah, Mike. Uh, the best report was not uh, kind to the referees, that's for sure. So, Hampton will start first and 10 on their 34-yard line. So, this is a... Uh, this is about a, a, a six-part process. Part one is you got to stop them here. And then part two is you need to score the first time you get the ball. And then we'll, we'll worry about the other parts after the first two. Yeah, that would be nice. Here's DiMatteo to the near side of the field. But you just got to wonder how dispirited the kids are after that. Brock White pushed DiMatteo out of bounds into the Highlands bench at the 39-yard line. It's a five. Didn't look like he's getting much, but he gets five yards. Yeah, Mike, you're right. It didn't look like uh, much to start with. But five yards will pop. That'll get you first down and easy. 
He had 29 yards on the ground in the first half. Christian Liberto, seven carries, 39. Brock Bordo on those sweeps, six carries, 49 yards. They like to distribute the ball around. Like they've done a good job over here. Meyer, the motion man. Meyer, it's going to run the sweep to the far side of the field and get the first down. Pushed ahead by Burford to the 46-yard line, but it's another Hampton first down. That's Meyer, who was the touchdown maker. When he picked up the ball that Luke Bombalski was handing to the official and he ran it back for a touchdown. Unbelievable. Seven-yard gain for Meyer. That's a first down for him. Sarah leads seven to three at halftime up in Freeport, Mike. That game was a late schedule, huh? Yep. First and 10. To DiMatteo again. 50. And as good yardage on that first down play, we'll see where he's marked out. I don't see anybody over there marking it. And Mike, despite the close score, the Hampton Armstrong game, 21-20, they're going to say he stepped out of bounds at 48. Sorry. Hampton had the ball three times inside the 20 in the first half, didn't score mm -hmm. any of the three times. So. Well, they also had a chance here after the fumble and didn't. Went right ahead. When the field goal was no good. Liberto. He'll take it down to the Highlands 47. And Timmons stop. Middle of the line. But Mike, third and three is this what Hampton wants. Especially where the ball is. Oh, yeah. And they've had a lot of short third downs because they're moving the ball so well. That offensive line is very impressive. We heard a lot of stuff about Mars offensive line going into last week's game. This line's way better. And that's not a knock on Mars. The Matteo with a big hole. And that's a first down of the 40 to the Highlands, 39. And now marker late. Our buddy's throwing a flag over there. Goodness knows what he saw. Well, I think there was uh, excessive roughness by one of the linemen after it's a the play. Face mask, he's calling. Face mask on the play. So that can be five or 15. The gain is to the 39, so it's an eight yard gain. Five yard face and mask garden variety. First down, Hampton at the Highlands, 34. Ten fourteen left of the third quarter. Dobbins can put it away with a score here. Kramick is hit and dropped by Timmons back at the 36-yard line. It's one of the first times we've called his name tonight. Yeah, Kramick, Mike, last year, he was the leading rusher, right? He was. He had uh, 28 carries for 134 yards in that game. You talk about being unselfish. He's back in a backup role, basically, to Liberto. And, and what's great about it is they, it's senior-senior. Yeah. And we might have a full start against the Talbots here. And, that, and that's what, what's so impressive about them. They just have so many seniors. Now oh, it's offside against Highlands. Another thing, Mike, tonight, six penalties, 45 yards. We haven't done that in the first four games. We call it second and about seven. After the penalty, and the give to Liberto. Dances through a hole and spins, but the Rams push him back as he gets to the 25. Drake Burford was there. Now, Roberto has some words. And now, Khalil Long getting into it. Doesn't look like he's getting into it with a Talbot, though. It looks like he's getting into it with one of his own. That's always, that's always productive. The last time we saw that was... Uh, we, usually when we play Mars, that stuff happens. Who's that running back, Mike? Henley. Kevin Lindsay. Yeah, he's a teacher now. <laughs> he got a personal foul from part of his own players. That was at knock, remember? Yep. Third down. He's a big fisherman now, Mike. Two. Like, Champion fisherman. Yeah, world renowned. Trophies and such. Yep. Borgo is the motion, man. We're going to have another penalty. And guess what? There's money in that, Mike. 
false start against the Talbots. I mean, they have a whole station. I talk about the golf channel. There's a fishing channel, and those guys compete for prize money. Speaking of the golf channel, do we know how that ended up today? Do you want to know, or are you taping? I do not want to know. You do I'm not want to know. It's going to put me to sleep tonight. Okay. After this, I'm going to. Well, now I, I know. Now I know. If you wanted to, you know, like mute yourself. If George, turn your head. <laughs> the old <laughs> Back George, in the man. old days. <laughs> You do not want to know. Turn your head if you don't want to know the score. Third down. Borgo in motion to the near side of the field. And DiMatteo's back and he fires. This is Hasselrig pulling it in. Gets inside the 25 and down to the 23-yard line. Brombalski brought him down, but that's enough for a first down. Just made it. You know, when I took over the scoreboard for Joe, George, I never did that. You know why? That was my homage to George. That was his. <laughs> that was it. That's true. And I could never duplicate that second completed pass. And he always did in such a soft voice. You know? <laughs> like he's talking to you, just you. Now they're going to run Borgo on the sweep. And finally, the Rams push him forward. Right, he would not give up on that play, Mike. And now we have pushing and shoving between Aaron Randolph. Well, along with Don Air, along with Daniel Timmons. Daniel Timmons come up limping. Aaron Randolph and Mike Withrop going at it. And now we have a flag down. It's getting really chippy now. Daniel Timmons, six tackles. And as important as he is on defense, like on offense, oh, he's holding against the Talbots. And the bad thing about this, Mike, they've taken half the third quarter on this drive. They have. This will bring the ball back to the 35-yard line. First and 21. And what I just showed you, that's not the first time that's happened tonight either. Oh, boy. DiMatteo back. He looks, he sets up, he's wide got a man open. wide open, and it's tipped and uh, caught and dropped. Everybody had a hand on it. Aaron Randolph had a hand on it, lost it, came into the hands of Withrop, and he couldn't hold on. Our center fielder back there, Aaron Randolph, has picked off two this year, almost had a third. Make it second and long. Second and 21. Hampton's had the ball the entire quarter. A lot of penalties here in this series. Borgo in motion. And to give to Liberto off the left side and cutting through there inside the 25 and down to the 23 yard line. Brock White down there along with Roberts. 12 yard game. Gets half of the back and make it third and nine. 6.50 to go. And Hampton in no rush, Mike. Nope. And probably field goal range again, huh? I think. He did one from 42 sure. earlier. Why not? <laughs> if, you get the, if you get the can and shoot it, that's what Wizard used to say about Brandon Williams. <laughs> He's going to throw. DiMatteo Pump fires it. it, pops in. It's Hasselrig. Beautiful down at the turf. First down, Hampton at the Highlands 12 yard line. And that is the pass. Signorella brought him down, but not before he made the first down. Well, Hampton had four first downs in the first half. They have four first downs on this drive. As you said, it was about a six-parter. This was not the part to start with. No, we've already, I think, lost the part or two. Oh, and a, oh spinning out of there is Rash, but I'm sorry, Borgo. They're going to call Borgo down back at the 19-yard line. Clear Long brought him down. White was in the backfield, Mike, and had the original hit. Dean, he wasn't down. He wasn't down. They did marked him uh, down. Did, yeah, they did. They marked, he was not down. No. No. What game are they watching? Don't know. Six-yard loss. Second and 16. All right. Second and 16. I got to give Brock White credit for that great tackle. And he'll take it, darn it. Now they're going to run a quick one over to Hasselrick. 
Wide receiver screen, and Hasselberg's brought down. He doesn't get back to the lead, the back stick. As Signorella got him over there at the 14-yard line. Third and 11 now. My goodness, DiMatteo's thrown eight passes. Probably his total for the year. <laughs> and we're down to the five-minute mark of the third quarter. Third and 11, wide side of the field to the left. Hasselrig is a wide receiver out there on the island. Brock Borgo, the motion man. And here's DiMatteo pumping and firing out here to Hasselrig. Hasselrig makes a man miss and twists and turns inside the 10 to the eight yard line. Well, we come up about five yards short of the first down. Chandler Timmons and Ethan Roberts on the stop. Looks like they're gonna probably kick the field goal here, right? They're lining up for it. Mike had mentioned youth night tonight. RIFO, our program for the young kids, Rams Youth Football Organization, combined 11 and 1. DiMatteo yep, one for two tonight. He connected on a 42 yarder. This is a 26 yard attempt. Meyer the holder. Snap is down, ball is down, kick is on its way, and it is good. Matt DiMatteo with a 26 yard field goal. And the Hampton Talbots extend their lead. It's Hampton 20 and Highlands nothing. By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, right up plays Burl today. Your Burl Bucks, what do they call their elementary program? The uh, Flyers. Flyers. Yep. Two, four, and six. Three games. Come on down to Highlands Youth Football against Burl Flyers. Ron Gillette Towing and Service, a registered contractor certified in PA State Inspection and Admissions. Call Gillette today for your towing, paving, excavating, hauling, demolition, and snow removal needs. Plan and clean up. Run to 10-yard cub walks, one call, and you can dump it all. No paint, no tires. No tires. John says so. Yep. Gillette Towing is fully licensed, insured, bonded, certified, and owns all of its state-of-the-art equipment. And the Gillettes are proud of their A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Call today at 724-226-1222. Answers 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Call Gillette. Look them up on Facebook at Ron Gillette, Inc towing and more. You know, Dean, NFL coaches would be proud of that drive. That was a 14 play field goal drive for Hampton. That's the NFL would love that. They love their field goal. 14 plays and impressive. <laughs> Mainly because they have guys that can kick field goals. That's probably why they like them so much. 20 to nothing. And you know, still, Rams were down this far against Armstrong in the third quarter at this point last year. So there is hope. There is hope. Impressive. This is Aaron Randolph. And he gets whistled before Mike. Out to the 20-yard line. Jaden Resch and Mike Santarello make the tackle. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you did. Um, you know, I've learned one very important thing tonight. You know what that is, Dan? What's that? Never hand a ball to the official. Make them come and take it from you. I guess that's the way it's got to be from here on in. First down at the 26-yard line. I can't wait to see this on YouTube tomorrow because I'm going right there, Mike. Trips left for the Rams this time. And again, Hampton unable to score touchdowns on those last two drives. Timmons throws. Oh, almost intercepted. He tried to do the bubble to Drake Burford, but it was all it went off his hands. And Oz FAT almost pulled it in. Oz, who kind of made that play on the two-point conversion last week and forced Caden Olsen to hurry that. Chandler now two for eight for only 13 yards, Mike. They bottled up our passing, and I said in the pregame, I thought that could be the difference, but we have not completed. We have not completed a pass past the line of scrimmage. That's not good. And there's that one, dude. Burford. Burford is hit, and down he goes back at the 15-yard line. Well diagnosed that time by Bobby Oliver, the senior safety. So that is a pass, right? Yep. And we're going to lose six on that. Well, actually, to the 15 yard line, you're going to lose 11. And you're going to lose. 11? I thought it was on a 20. Okay, yeah, five. Six. You're right. Okay. Six. Yeah. 
Third and 15 now for the Golden Rams. Timmons back. Here they come. Pressure. They got him. He gets got away. Sprints right. Nobody coming ball. back. Nobody's coming back. No. And, and it's caught by Brian Randolph at the 33-yard line. Incomplete. Well, he, now they're going to say incomplete. But once again, Dean, like, that was a yeah. perfect illustration. Yeah, they all just everybody. There. Nobody came back to the you quarterback. You got to come back, guys. When the ball is in the air and our quarterback's on the run, come back to the ball. It's pretty simple. Fourth and sixteen. The Rams will have to punt it. Like speaking of Hollins quarterbacks, I saw a living legend at halftime. You did? Who, who bones? No, nope, huh? a little further back than that. Air Crump, Ed Flowers. His son played quarterback here too for those 2008, 2009 team. Oh, Jeff Sinclair Sr. Sinclair Sr. is here with his lovely wife, Lori. That's nice, I didn't Up miss by. them. High snap and Bombalski boots it. It's a good one, near side of the field. Meyer over the shoulder takes it at the 50. Good and a good form, form tackle. tackle by the snapper, Drake Burford. He's got the free release. You're not allowed to be over him. And he got down there to make the tackle at the 44-yard line. He did his 30, job. 35-yard punt. And why bring up Jeff 40 years ago, Mike? That's a long time ago. That was my senior year. We've been discussing this. This is all my senior year we're talking about. He ran for a touchdown, passed for another, and that receiver was Joe Watucky, another great. Uh, How about that? Great. You know, I also saw in the notes this week that Burl's Brian Hewitt caught 12 passes 40 years ago. I, I was friends with Brian all the way since kindergarten, and that record still stands at Burl, 12 catches in one game still, that he did 40 years ago. Hampton starts out in great field position at the 45. Borgo in motion. He gets it. Follows the block of Roberto this time, and... Borgo's down the sideline. A flag comes in right at the feet of Aaron Randolph, but he didn't do anything wrong. I think he may have been impeded. Let's see. Timmons and Bender on the stop. Tell what, like they set these blocks up very, very well. I saw that time. They had a good, nice kick out block and face mask against Highlands. I'm wrong. Yeah, we can't get out of our own way here. No, sir. So it's a five-yard penalty. They get to the 32. It's a 12-yard gain for Borgo. 55 yards for him. Five-yard incidental face mask call against Highlands. The ball's on the 27. And Liberto gets the carry, and diving down at his feet nicely was Bender to trip him up. And twenty-five yard line, two-yard pickup. Once again, Mike, completely controlling the third quarter. The yeah, Highlands has had the ball for three plays here, and there's only a minute twenty-five left in the period. And they had 32 minutes of possession time a week ago. Second and seven. This is Jake Premick. Runs into a pile and makes the pile move. He's still going. Daniel Timmons down there. Along with Brock White. We'll give him four yards to the 21. Third down and three. Well, Hampton's come in here and proven a point so far. Not to... Uh, yeah, it's almost bully ball, Mike, to that effect. They're just not to... Uh, putting her Controversial call accepted. Uh, Island still hasn't been able to score. Correct. So if you get zero, it doesn't matter what happened in that regard. That's the truth. DiMatteo is pass. back. They chase him. Fires for the end zone. There's Hasselrig. Touchdown. Hampton's Talbots. Wide open Hasselrig. What was his dad's name, Mike? Carlton. Carlton. And the crazy thing about it, he went to Pitt Johnstown as a wrestler. And he played in the NFL. And Benny's got five passes for 50 yards. That one a 21-yard touchdown pass 
from Matt DiMatteo, and the Talbots have put this one on ice at 22 seconds left of the third quarter. They're making it look too easy, Mike. DiMatteo ran a late man on the field, yeah. and Matt will get a chance to kick this one. Meyer is the holder, puts it down. DiMatteo's kick is inside the right upright, and the Talbots lead 27 to nothing at 22 seconds left of the third quarter. Now, Philippi's family dining and pizzeria was born in Echona Heights in 1999, and it didn't take long for the name to become synonymous with great food and overwhelming community support. Philippi's Burgers, Wings, specialty sandwiches, wraps, and of course pizza. Not just any pizza, but the often imitated, never duplicated Birdville pie, made with their special super secret recipe and named for the Birdville section of Natrona Heights. The kitchen is open after the game, so stop by and say hi, or call 724-226-3505 for takeout, or to order a partially baked Birdville pie to take home for yourself. And remember, they serve a full breakfast every morning starting at 8 o'clock. That's Philippi's Family Dining and Pizzeria on Freeport Road, Natrona Heights. And again, it's going to be a tough night of Philippi's tonight, Mike, if this keeps up. Yes, and I'm perfectly willing to pronounce that Hampton's going to be in the playoffs this year. <laughs> because, yeah. because whoever wins this game goes. Now, as we said many times, the loser can go and has gone many times, but the winner of this game has gone to the playoffs every game this century that they've played. And I'll make this a succinct comment. I don't want to see a better team in this conference than them. Well, there isn't a better team in this conference than them. I think I can, I can get to that right now. <laughs> if, like you said, if there is, show me. I don't want to see them. <laughs> they have been well, I watched the game last Dominic week. Aaron Armstrong's Knight. pretty good. So they'll be in here later this year. Here's DiMatteo. That'll be a passing show. This is Braden White. Fumbles. Picks it up at the 10. And is in trouble. And down he goes. He was first hit by 52, Gabe Ganelli. And then Mike Santarella got him. I, I looked down. I probably should have kept watching. They kind of know what was going to get called there. But Hey, Mike, a happy 18th birthday to John Stober, one of our Florida friends. Oops, I'm sorry. That's his 81st birthday. I transposed the number. Oh, isn't that nice? I should have known that when it said. Uh, that makes him as old as my mother, you know. He's telling newcomers, Pappy John. That should have told me something. <laughs> speaking of speaking of mothers, I met cameraman Dan's mother at halftime. It was very nice, so it's nice to meet her. Super lady. She was a great mother when I coached her son, Jim. There's the give to Bombalski, and another helmet goes flying. Luke will he'll make that happen. Rush's helmet goes. I think it's the second time Rush lost his lid tonight. Four-yard pickup for Bombalski. John, by the way, is telling newcomers grandfather. Unfortunately, Talon's injured. He hurt his wrist. The JVs are going to play tomorrow up at Hampton. They're going to be missing uh, James Nobiglia, too, Mike. He hurt his ankle. Actually, he's going to play tomorrow. He did a great job against Mars last week uh, at the goal line. The last, play, uh, the last play of the third quarter was Luke Bombalski's first carry of the second half. That's, That's the good. end of the third quarter with the score. Hampton 27 and Highlands nothing. Well, Mike, it's trivia time. Often imitated, never duplicated. So good this year that we, we, found, a, we found a sponsor. We have. Has your home or business ever been damaged by water or mold? Then you know how stressful that situation can be. Our friends at Unflooded are here to help you. From a broken pipe, sewer backup, or flooding, they have the expertise in getting your home dry and ready for repairs. When it comes to having mold in your home, they will come in, assess the situation, and put together a game plan on removing the mold and keep it coming back first time always. Visit unflooded.com or call Brian Marr at 888-650-7767. Any time of the day, that's 888-650-7767. They will come in and get the job done for you. I've heard people tell me not only is it as good, it's better than before. And Brian could talk your ear off. That could happen. I know his dad would. Well, he was on the team at one time, yeah. and I fixed up and it ended up being his son, Brennan. So I got that right, at least. <laughs> Second down and six. Was he start the fourth quarter? This is Bombolski. Gets through there, up over the 20 to the 24-yard line. Call it the 23. That's a Highlands first down. Their first of the second half, I believe it is. 
I got him at 93 yards on 16 carries, Mike. That's one of the important stats we have to keep an eye on. Yeah, that's pretty much all we're at right now. In the second half, try to get him over 100 again. It can be good because the season does not end tonight, folks. That's the thing. You, you might get an L, but uh, the playoffs are still what your goal is right now. First down at the 23-yard line. Timmons fires, and it's too tall for his intended receiver. Tried to get it to Braden White. Got the trivia question? Yeah, on? I was going to say, I was so intent on getting Luke his 100 yards, I forgot the trivia question. Mike, been a big grind game tonight. Who has, and it just need a number, the most career touchdowns in PIAA history, not a name, just a number. How many touchdowns does somebody score in a career okay. in Pennsylvania? I'll let the folks think about that one for a minute because I have to think about that one for this a minute. This is a national statistic. They had every state and they listed who led in touchdowns. Very interesting read. Second down and 10. Bombolski, the single setback. Low snap. And Timmons going to have to keep it and spins to the right and does keep it and gets back to maybe the 23 yard line. And that won't be, won't be a sack because it was a run. Chandler's not happy about that over there on the side. No, no. Third down, we'll call it 10. 11, 10 to go. Okay. Most touchdowns in a career. How about 60? Okay, so that would be 15 a year, right? Okay, we'll give you the answer after this. Point. All right, it's, it's obviously more than that. Not 60. Third, <laughs> it's obviously more than that. Third down. I thought I went high. Bombolski. Let's get him up there. He gets to the 25. He gets two. 95 now on 17 carries. Try 159 touchdowns. My goodness. That is 40 a year. Did, did this guy go to the pros and make lots of money in the NFL at some point? Well, let me tell you his name. Remember, remember Gage Clark? I remember Gage Clark. Gage Clark made the – he was in the paper this week too for yeah. uh, happening. Ten years ago, he threw a touchdown pass. We beat uh, Gatani 24 to 21. Well, this guy's name is Gage Garcia, Mike. Okay. Gage Garcia. That's lots of touchdowns. Bombolski to kick it. And have you ever heard of him? I've not. <laughs> the ball's kicked out of bounds at the 47-yard line, I believe. That should tell you something about his career. But I'll tell you what, he played at a great school. Remember Southern Columbia? Oh, yeah. And guess what? He did it recently. It was 2016 to 2019. And he went to Michigan, Mike. He's a Michigan man. He's a Michigan man. Played football and wrestling. Hampton will start at the Highlands 47. They lead it 27 to nothing with 10.03 left third quarter. Again, the Plum Mustangs will be in next week. The Rams would like to do a little, uh, they're gonna need a, a comeback from tonight and then a possible little bit of uh, comeback on Plum. They haven't beaten Plum very much recently. And Mike Plum, remember last year they were loaded and we gave him a good game last year. Did. Joey Myers, a quarterback. Now they, they have trouble with it. He keeps it because he had no choice. And Signorella fires him down to the turf at the 46 yard line. He was trying to give it to Premick and they had trouble with the exchange. So Meyer is in. Looks like DiMatteo's on ice now. Two yard gain. Not one yard gain. Fourth carry of the night for Meyer. He had his, his others on sweeps. Coming from wing back. Now they're going to give it to Premick. And Premick is surrounded by Chandler Timmons as he gets to the 45 yard line, and Timmons gets up very slowly. Chandler, Daniel, Timmons, and Aaron Randolph on that stop. Third down and eight. Hampton 27, Highlands nothing. They have come in here to Golden Ram Stadium tonight and taking care of business. Borgo in motion. And now they call late yes. play. False start. I believe that was Logan Rutledge, the left tackle. No, Logan's not in there. Yeah, he is. 78. That is who it was. I 
I hear that train coming. You hear the train? Yes, I do. Hear it? It's coming around the bend. <laughs> injured goal ram down there, Mike. You see him laying on the table. They're all bandaged up. Hope he's going to be okay. I don't know who that is. Third and 13. Four go in motion. And Meyer's going to run it left. The Rams have him on a good defensive play that time by Brian Randolph. He came up and met him in a good form tackle, and he put Meyer down. Fourth down. Can you announce for my daughter to report to the 50-yard line? What? My daughter to come to the 50-yard line. Daughter's on a 50-yard line. I said, she wants her daughter. <laughs> In the punt now, fourth down. Brought the Matty out to punt that one. Yes, they did. Aaron Randolph back there. Oh, this is going to be a dandy. It's going out of bounds at the two Whoa. yard line. That's the kind of night it's been for yeah. the Talbots. Sure has. Everything's gone their way. Whoever it is, it's down on the table for the Rams. Looks like they have ice on the groin area. Is it? Looks like it might be Tyler Bennett. Okay, yeah, I can't, uh, not sure. So, and that's the other thing. You get these types of games and you end up with walking wounded after them. The punt's out of bounds at the three yard line. What a dandy. So the Rams will start at the three with 7.32 to go. Bombalski. Brought down by Schwartz. We'll call it to the five yard line to get two. Second and eight. Luke getting dangerously close to that 100-yard mark again tonight. That's all we have left to go for here, I think. And he turns, but not this time. And there was Logan Rutledge taking out some of his frustration from that false start on the offensive side of the ball. Third down and eight. And I have Luke 19 carries, now 97 yards. 6.40 to go, 27 nothing Talbots. Hampton again will play Greensburg Salem at home next week. Highlands, of course, will play Plum here. And the Rams will have to go to work to try to secure a playoff spot now. Hampton, of course, automatic entry by winning this game. <laughs> Bombalski carries men with him up over the 10. He's got 100 now. He's at the 20, the 25, 30, and up to the 35 yard line. Now, whatever you do, don't give the ball away. I think he fell on the ball. But a big run for Bombalski. He gets the first down and the 100 yards for the fifth straight game. And that record continues, Mike. 30-yard game. And now 127 on 20 carries. Well, now they move it back to the 33, so we were close. 27 yards. Highlands first, first down in the second half, Mike. Timmons keeps it, and oh, he got bent backwards. Keeper by Chandler Timmons, brought down by number 42, Oz at the So, no gain on the play. No gain, second and 10. Clock winding, 5-10 left. Last time here, Islands beat Hampton 26-7, all the way back in 2013. Timmons throws it, caught by Signorella on his way. 45-50, 45-40, 35-30. Signorella's pushed out of bounds at the Hampton 15-yard line. 
Well, that connected. All the way to the 15. 52 yards, 17 and 35. That gives Chandler 59 on the evening. First catch for Landon tonight. He came in leading the squad with 13. First down Highlands. Now let's see if they can get the goose egg off the scoreboard. Bombalski the single setback. Timmons is back and here they come. And Timmons gonna have to run it to the 15, to the 10, and spins out of bounds inside the 10 at the seven yard line. Logan Schwartz, the senior defensive end, got Timmons off his feet, but not before he got eight yards. Second and short. Clock stops on the out of bounds play, 4.36 to go. Bumbalski tries to get to the first down, but he's dragged down by Jaden Rush before he could get there. It'll be third and one. Third and a yard to go. Rams, of course, will have two plays to try to get this. Hampton will solidify their ranking. They came in ranked fifth. Only local team ranked is Springdale. Yeah, like they went to fourth in the... Timmons gonna keep it. Timmons gets the first down and more. Uh, Timmons pinballs into the there. end zone. Highlands touchdown. A six yard to Highlands touchdown by Chandler Timmons. Get us off the snipe. And the Rams have scored at 350 left fourth quarter. Bombalski on for the extra point. He's 18 out of 21. Signorella the holder at the post to our left. Snap, the ball is down, the kick is on its way, and it is good. 350 left, fourth quarter. It's now Hampton 27 and Highland 7. Well, Mike, maybe a little too late, but again, we're on the board. Better than nothing. It's kind of the way I look at it, huh? So we'll see if the Rams have some razzle-dazzle on the kickoff here. I really thought they might come out with something on the opening kickoff, but decided against it. So yep. we'll see what they have for us here. Do you practice the onside kick? That's the question. We're definitely going to see it. Chandler Timmons getting the checked out on the bench. Doc's wagging a finger in front of him, so he took a pretty good shot there on his way into the end zone. Dr. Jerbicki over there. Mike, you hear Deion Johnson is out this week. For, uh, I, just, I don't know his name, I just call him Toledo. Yeah, that's him. And he got hurt in last play of the game. Which I, which I lost my mind when that happened, because what are you doing? Exactly. That, that, was, that was so unnecessary. The game was over, you, you know, what, what, is, what are you doing? So Bombalski will kick off. They run Braden White out there late. Is Hampton gonna call timeout because they wanna? I think they are. Hampton's gonna call time. 3.50 left, fourth quarter. Highlands trailing Hampton. It's the Talbots 27, the Rams 7. We'll take a quick timeout and be back for the kickoff right after this. So the Talbots have the hands team. They have 10 players within five yards of the restraining line. Let's see if Bombolski tries the onside kick here. He does. Kicks it to the near side of the field, and it's pulled in nicely. Down at the, about number 61 on the hands team, the center, Cole Rise. Well, he touches the ball on every play, so yep, yep, yep. why not? All right, Mike, we know that uh, Hampton's going to be top of the conference after this week. Greensburg, Indiana, who do you got there? 
They're playing tonight. That's a good one. I think I like Indiana. I'm going to go with Greensboro just because they had a quarterback. Said his name earlier, Hayden Tesca. Tesca. 909 on a year. That's a good number. Yeah. So it'll be Hampton and either Greensburg and Indiana on top of the conference. And we're going to fall into a tie with uh, a few other teams here. And who else we got tonight? Also tonight, Knock at Armstrong and Mars at Plum. I'm like an Armstrong and Plum. Yeah, Talbots could be coming in off a win. Borgo in motion. They might have run out of time. Yep. That's it. Delay a game. It's funny, you know, I was watching the game last night. I know I'm a maskist. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> Texans game against uh, against Carolina. They at play at play clocks at zero so many times and it's just they're told I guess to just let it go and unless there's a you know you need to see it, you need to see the you know, and then that was a much quicker flag than you'd see on a Sunday. Jake Premick, back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. Slow to get up, Rock White. Daniel Timmons down there to make the tackle. Daniel Timmons made the tackle. No game. No game. Daniel now with nine tackles leads all full ramp. Getting a little bit chilly. Made it up to about 70 today, I'd say. Right now, it's 58 degrees under clear skies at Golden Ram Stadium. Meyer turns, and they give to Premick. Premick through the middle, and he's hit hard. The ball's out, and the Rams have it at the 50-yard line. As coming up with it for Highlands was Aaron Randolph. And they better have let that one go. Yeah, I was just say. Okay, Brock White made the original hit. So White hit him and stripped it. Well, Mike, just like insurance months came to an end, I think our shorts are going to come to an end. Oh, no, it's going to be just fine next week. We wore shorts tonight because we were 4-0 with shorts. The sacrifices we've made, not going to go home with my skinny full legs. I tried. First and 10 Highlands at the 50. Now they get the turnover, they get one quick. Look at Timmons uh -oh. in trouble, Look gets him. away. He has room over here, 50. That's his most exciting three yard gain you'll ever see. Bobby Oliver makes the tackle. Second and seven. And should we entitle that running for your life? <laughs> it's amazing what you can do when you're afraid. Clock winds to 229. The Rams have three timeouts left. Lucas Cowles at a left tackle, Mike Clill uh, Long on the sideline. Timmons back. Time. Looking. 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 Mike. And he throws it incomplete. Working his way back with Signorella. But he couldn't get back to it. And Simmons I, gets up slowly. Like Chandler, kept looking downfield for an open target. There was none to be had. That is a covered, I wouldn't say sack, he got rid of the ball. But, but at least Landon back. came back to him. Yeah. And he worked his way back all the way across the field and did come back. So it's third and eight at 2.02 left. And you see a little frustration from Chandler, like he pounded to the ground. It's been a frustrating night for a lot of people here tonight. What started as a big night with the Stiller Showcase game, we had the youth all here, and uh, unfortunately Hampton came to town and dominated. Two seconds on the play clock, Timmons gets the snap. Uh -oh, look he out. looks, he's hit from behind, and he's sacked at the 46-yard line. And, and, and that was Logan side. Schwartz. That's the only where we have Will Long protecting him. Mike. Wasn't there that time. It's only the second time they've sacked him, but it's not for lack of trying. Yep. They have been all over him. Not sack pressure for sure. Fourth down at 14. Yeah, looks like Rams will give it one man, last, last, and I was going to say last, uh, last shot at the OK Corral, and 
Chandler's walking like John Wayne right now, and that's not a good thing. Pilgrim. Fourth and 14, timeout Highlands at 116. Yeah, Mike, they didn't call it time off. The clock was going to expire on them. So, yeah. I'm going to give them one more shot at this here on fourth down. 27 to 7, Hampton. They led it on a Liberto run in the first quarter, 7 to nothing. Then Matt DiMatteo kicked a 42 yard field goal to put the Talbots up 10 to nothing on the ensuing possession with the Rams trailing it 10 to nothing, but driving all the way out. At the, near the 45 of Highlands, Luke Bombalski was called for a fumble on a play that he was down handing the ball to the official. Joey Meyer picked it up and ran it back 44 yards for a touchdown, and the game completely changed its complexion ever since right there. No doubt about it, Mike. It was just a strange situation. And nobody did anything. Like you said, the kid was smart. He picked up the ball and ran it in. Everybody else looked like, why is he doing that? But never heard a whistle. I mean, when you're used to watching games on television and that game could be looked at on replay and it would have been fixed here, you know, here on a Friday night, that's not the case. And They're not coming up here and letting us show them. No challenge flags indeed. <laughs> and so, somehow I'm okay with that. Yeah. But sometimes they bite you and sometimes you get the benefit of it, so. We'll have to remember that when we get one that goes our way. Fourth down, Correct. if that ever happens. 21 years, I haven't seen it. That's a joke. Timmons back. Here he comes again. In trouble. Oh, got, got away. Timmons looking. He's not going to get away this time. He's, he won't go down without a fight, though. And that's a sack. And it's Hampton's ball, and they can run the clock out, take, take a knee and be done with it. And the Talbots are going to go to 5-0 and oh for the first time since 2015. Yeah, Mike, and the goal rounds, we have to regroup here. Because again, Plum, veteran team last year, still have a lot of talent left over. They have an outstanding running back, Mike, and uh, the way Hampton ran here tonight, he's got to be looking at his chops. So I would assume Meyer's going to come out here and take the knee. They just start the play clock right now, so 25 seconds on it. It's winding. A minute four left on the big scoreboard clock here, the brand new scoreboard clock at Golden Ram Stadium. The Plum Mustangs will be here next Friday. The Rams have some business to take care of. They haven't beaten them in a while. The Dean mentioned a really good game out at Plum last year. Yeah, we deserved a better fate in that one. Tight formation. And Meyer takes an aim. I'll have to do it one more time, I think. The Talbots are going to go home up the Turnpike. Happy camp. The Talbots took a knee for the play. Let's have it one more time. Second and ten. So thanks to cameraman Dan for all his help upstairs. Thanks to cameraman Dan's mom for coming to the game. It's nice to see her and meet her. Thanks to Ken Wood. It's been an eventful week for him. Nice that he's here. Thanks to the dean, as always. One more knee. And that's going to do it. I think yeah, we've got to do one more, huh? No, I think they're good. And the Hampton Talbots have yep, come into good. Golden Rams Stadium and handled the Highlands Golden Rams by a score of 27 to 7, giving them their first loss of the year and stopping the Rams winning streak at seven games over two years. Yeah, we were third on the WPL, not anymore. Mike, I'm going to use one word, and that is regroup. Yes, exactly. All right, so thanks to everyone. Once again, that final score here tonight. The Hampton Talbots 27, they remain undefeated. The Highlands Golden Rams 7. For the Dean, Mike Choma, this is Mike Pavlik saying so long.